People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Hi, Dr. Brewer. Do you recommend the same statin and dosage you to your patient for arterial plaque? Pravastatin, one milligram per day. And why is chosen? Baby aspirin? Thank you so much. Much respect. Here's the thing. You know, I mentioned in the introduction that a couple of guys, Paul Ridker and Gavin Blake, discovered that statins were actually decreasing cardiovascular inflammation, not just decreasing LDL levels. Well, one of the other things that we found was that it doesn't take 80 grams of Lipitor to do that. In fact, Lipitor is really good at lowering your LDL, but it's not that good at lowering cardiovascular inflammation, especially if you have diabetes or prediabetes, which is over 80% of us. So I don't use Lipitor, the most commonly used one out there. In addition, other ones like Pravastatin, some of the others are okay, they're good, but we really used to use them more for uh, Crestor or Resuvastatin lost its patent. Why? Because there was a thing called KIF-6 and that gets really technical. It also gets into genetic testing. And bottom line is you don't have to worry about that with Crestor. So uh, use of Simvastatin, Patavastatin, some of those went out the door for cardiovascular inflammation, went out the door with Crestor which was more expensive at that time, like patavastatin is now, when Crestor lost its patent. So the only one that's really good and is still under patent is patavastatin. Why is it good? Well, it's got a major side effect advantage. It does not increase insulin resistance. Even Crestor does, but not really significantly at doses of five milligrams per day or less. Yeah. 20 milligrams, 40 milligrams of Crestor, even 10 starts to get there in terms of causing more insulin resistance. So you're sort of feeding the devil or, you know, making, balancing, making things worse when you start with most statins. Not quite so much with patavastatin. So if you can afford patavastatin, that's what I recommend. But I personally, right now, I've gone back to taking resuvastatin myself and it had to do with a cost related issue. I'm on Medicare now, but a long story in terms of reimbursement, et cetera. So what do I recommend? Low dose, I don't recommend high doses. Which statins, patavastatin, or it's also called Levalo, or Zepatamag is another version of it. Pavasta is a generic coming out of India. That's another version of patavastatin. I've taken all of those. And then Crestor. And uh, the recommendation is usually five milligrams per day or less. Hi, Dr. Brewer. When taking a daily baby aspirin for prevention, does it matter for the chewable or enteric version? Enteric coated is used. Enteric coats are, you know, they used to be unreliable. Sometimes you get, you'll find the pill hole in poo. So in other words, it wasn't being, it never made it through the enteric coating. Enteric coatings are a little better these days. Bottom line is I wouldn't use enteric coating unless I really had to. Chewable's okay, regular's okay, and 360 milligram adult aspirin is not okay. Don't take it. It actually increases your risk. Take baby aspirin. I get it a lot where people say, well, if a baby aspirin is good, then, you know, then a lot more is a lot better. No, it's not. You start getting into a different metabolic profile when you increase the amounts that much. Another big question that comes up about the use of baby aspirin is you've seen headlines several times over the past couple of years. I'm blanking on the names of the trials, but these made it into things like the New York Times where they said, oh, don't use baby aspirin anymore for primary prevention. So Brewer, are you behind? Are you not aware of that? I'm very much aware of that. And actually, I got some of this from Brad and Amy, uh, Bale and Deneen, in terms of looking hard at the recommendations for baby aspirin. The bottom line was I never recommended baby aspirin. Well, since those early meetings about almost 10 years ago now, I have not recommended baby aspirin based on age. That would be primary prevention. I only recommend baby aspirin based on documentation that you have plaque. And, you know, I was doing that with one of my patients this week. It was not really clear that she had plaque. She had a significant increase in her LDL. Her doc was wanting her to go on statins. And my perspective was, I don't feel nearly as strong. And I personally wouldn't recommend them until we know that you've got plaque and we don't know that yet. At that point, I'd recommend the low-dose statin and 
the baby aspirin. What does that mean about this recommendation? They don't recommend it for primary prevention anymore. Primary prevention is you don't have the disease yet. And I would agree that's been my practice for over a decade. I don't recommend baby aspirin or statins if it's still primary prevention for cardiovascular disease. In other words, you don't have any plaque.